Hello everyone, and welcome back to an Introduction to Programming Remastered. So far in this series, we've covered some information on general rules for writing code, as well as the ins and outs of the print statement and the console. In today's episode, we are going to be building upon this knowledge and going over basic mathematics and string operations that the computer can carry out. To begin, let's go over some basic math that the computer can do. Firstly, the computer is able to carry out simple arithmetic. This includes addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division, as can be seen on the screen now. When using an IDE, or simply running a script that you've written from your computer, you'll be able to print out the answer to any math problem that you could want to know using these operations. You may wonder why you would ever want to write a program to do simple calculations when you have a perfectly good calculator that you could use instead. Well, generally, when your program is doing math, it isn't for the explicit purpose of you viewing the answer to those equations, but instead, it is because you need the value derived from an equation to be used elsewhere in your program. These basic operations are super useful for any given program you may want to write. Let's say, for example, you are making a simple animation where you want to have a ball bouncing around the screen. In order to properly model gravity, you will need to adjust the velocity of the ball based on its acceleration. To do this, each time your program takes a pass, you may add a certain value to the ball's x and y velocity. There are also many other situations, even in this basic example, where basic arithmetic would be useful. For instance, in using the distance formula to determine when the ball collides with another object, or determining how the ball acts in response to these collisions. In addition to the basic four math equations, most programming languages will also allow you to use an operator called the modulus. If you have not heard of the modulus, it may sound complicated or fancy, but really it's quite simple. The modulus gives you the remainder when one number is divided by another. For example, 10 modulus 4 would give you the remainder when 10 is divided by 4, which would be 2. Furthermore, 18 modulus 10 would be 8, and 66 modulus 6 would be 0. Hopefully you get the idea. The modulus operator is extraordinarily useful in many cases. For example, if you want to determine if an integer is even or odd, then you would take that number, let's call it x, and write x modulus 2. This will return either 1 or 0. If x modulus 2 is equal to 1, then x is not divisible by 2, and therefore it is odd whereas if x modulus 2 is equal to 0, then it is an even integer. This can be expanded upon to determine if any number x is divisible by any other number y. If x modulus y is equal to 0, then x is divisible by y. It varies whether programming languages have access to other basic mathematical operators. For example, Python has the built-in ability to apply exponents to numbers, as shown on the screen now. However, Java does not. This is no big deal, however, as both Python and Java, as well as many other general purpose languages, have access to a math module that you can import to expand the mathematical operations that you can use. Modules and functions are something we will get into later, but for now, just imagine modules as packages that you can import into your program to increase the functionality of the language that you are using. However, your computer can do more than just working with numbers. Your computer also has the ability to apply operations to strings. Strings are another way of just saying text. For example, hello world is a string. The letter A is a string, although some languages have a separate char variable type, but that's not important right now. Anything enclosed in quotations is considered a string. Keep in mind that this means that 9 is a string when it is enclosed in quotes, as is 9 plus 1 plus 4 minus 6 times 6. These may look like integers, but the computer will treat them very differently, as they are indeed strings. 
There are multiple operations that you can do with strings, similar to the operations that you can carry out on numbers. The following examples are going to be using Python to show some string operations. For a first example, if I take the string hello, I can then add other strings onto it. For example, print hello plus goodbye would print to the console hello goodbye. This is known as concatenation. Additionally, print hello times three would print to the console hello hello hello. However, you cannot subtract values from a string, as strings are immutable. Mutability refers to the ability of something to change. You may think, well, weren't we changing the string when we did hello plus goodbye, or when we did hello times three? In this case, we actually created new strings rather than changing the original string. Mutability can get very confusing. However, it doesn't come much into play until we get into lists and arrays later in the series. Let's say you were making a game where, at the end, you would like the user's score to be printed out to the console. Now, like we went over in the video on the print statement and the console, generally you do not want to include the console in your final product like this. However, for the sake of this example, let's assume that this is fine. Let's say that you have the user's score stored in a variable called score. Variables are going to be the focus of the next video, but for this example, it's fine to think of variables as things that can store values of a certain kind. In this case, the variable score would store an integer value, representing the user's score. Let's assume that the user ends the game with a score of 4. In order to best display this to the user, we can print game over, your score was, plus score. This almost works, but keep in mind that score stores an integer value of 4 and you cannot concatenate strings and integers, as the plus operator acts differently for strings than it does for integers. The way to solve this is to change the type of score, or any non-string value that you would like to concatenate to a string, to a string, before attempting your concatenation. In Python, this can be done quite simply by writing print game over your score was plus stir score. This concatenates the string value 4 to the string that you are printing, rather than attempting to concatenate the integer value score to the string, which would not work. Many programming languages have many more complex and more effective methods of formatting strings and concatenating values to them, but using the plus operator is easy to understand and effective enough when you're starting out. It's important to note that the computer will take whatever you put in the print statement and print it out as you write it. Notice that I made sure to include a space after the colon in the string I was printing, as this causes the computer to add a space between the colon and the user's score. Otherwise, it would look like this, which is not very appealing. This is just a common example of how you have to be very specific with what you want the computer to print and how you would like it to print it. Finally, I would like to touch once more upon the importance in the difference between integers stored as integer values and what appear to be integers but are really stored as string values. When you write 4 plus 9, you would probably expect 13 to be the result, and it will be. Additionally, 4 times 9 would be 36. However, 4 plus 9, where each of 4 and 9 is a string, will give you the string of 49. Additionally, 4 times 9, where both 4 and 9 are strings, would actually crash, as you cannot multiply one string by another string. However, if 4 were a string and 9 were an integer, it would give you 9 4s in a string. Just make sure to know what type of value you are dealing with when using mathematical and string operations, as they act very differently depending on whether you're dealing with numbers or strings. When it comes to computer science, things like this, where the difference between 4 as an integer and 4 as a string seems to be very small, can actually lead to the program behaving in hugely different manners. That does it for this video. Next episode, we will be going over variables, which are a fundamental and necessary component of any program that's more complicated than just performing one line of arithmetic. Be sure to like if you enjoyed, 
and subscribe so you won't miss the videos that we have planned, both in this series and videos covering other topics. With that said, thanks for watching.